What's up you guys? So today I'm going to do a video all about how I edit in iMovie and along with that I'm going to show you guys how I do my intros, how I make my transition slides, and how I make my end screen. So before I get into this video, if you guys could subscribe to my channel, that would mean so much to me. And then if you're interested in learning about any of the things I just mentioned, then just keep watching. So first thing I want to do is show you guys how I edit my video before I put it into iMovie. So I go to Visco. Um, to do this with videos, I believe you do have to pay for Visco, but I go to videos and I select the video that I am going to edit, and then I just play around with the saturation and the highlight and the exposure, just because where I film my videos, it's kind of a dark room, so it's good to mess with that. So then I open it in iMovie. So I'm not going to show you guys what each and every button does because that question mark icon on the top right, it is like a tutorial button and you can click it and it'll highlight each button and tell you kind of what they do as well as most of them are self-explanatory. So right here I'm just cutting out the first couple seconds of the video because I do have to set up the camera and there is a couple seconds where I'm not doing anything in between when I press record and when I start talking. So I'm just gonna edit that out. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I do my intros. So I open up Magic Eraser. I will link all of these apps in the description. So right now I'm just using the Magic Erase tool to click away the background, and then I will use the Erase tool to manually go in and kind of erase the background. This is a little bit easier with the paid version. I'm not really sure what that app is called, but there is a paid version as well as if you take a picture in front of like a blank background or a background that contrasts the foreground or you, it will be a little bit easier to erase. So I usually zoom in right here and I just try to go along my hairline, erasing some of like the flyaway hairs, but I do try to include some of like the curl pieces. I just feel like it makes it look a little bit more realistic if you go around some of the hair pieces. So you'll see in a minute that I do try to go inward but then come outward where there is like a piece of hair like this curl that does come out So I'm finishing up here. So to save it, I'm going to go to that square icon in the top right and click that and then I'm going to click on the PNG, the transparent background and save that picture. So next we're gonna open the app Fonto and then we're gonna click on the little camera icon on the bottom middle and select plain image. You can choose the black or the white square, just make sure you change the color to green. I usually choose the brightest green but it really doesn't matter. And then once you select the green, you go to the top and you can do custom or I go to iPhone 8. If you were to do custom, you can do 1280 by 720 and that is the YouTube like size. And then clicking the square on the top right and click use. Then, then you're gonna click on the three little lines on the bottom left and click add image and then select the image that you just saved. And then I usually just move this into the middle and adjust the size so it's big enough. Once I have it to a good size, I will click the three little lines on the bottom left and click add item. I will then select the circle outline, change it to white, and then try to adjust it around the picture so that it doesn't look awkward and there's no like gaps. Once it's all adjusted where I want it, I click the square on the bottom right and save the image. So next we're going to open the app Motion Portrait, click the icon, and then click the bottom middle that says Library and select the image that we just saved from Fonto. So then it will select the eyes and the mouth for you. If you don't like it, you can adjust the positions, but in this case, I think it's fine. So then I'm gonna go to the bottom right and click the little video camera icon and record video for six to seven seconds. 
and then save that. So then you need to get a background. So I go to Google and I type in like cute cloud background or whatever kind of background you're looking for. And then I'll usually put in that I want it to be 1280 by 720 just to be sure that it works and it's not super pixelated or something. So I just chose this one just cause it was the first one that popped up. And then you're gonna go to pocket video and then start new project and then click YouTube vlog, which is the top left. And then, and then you're gonna click the little pink plus sign to add in a new project. So then you're gonna go to photo and then you're gonna select the background that you just saved. So once that imports, you're gonna want to move your slider to the beginning of the clip and then click on video sticker and then click on the plus sign for add. And you're gonna to wanna to go to camera roll and open the project that we just saved from Motion Portrait. And then you're gonna to wanna to click done once you have that uploaded to Pocket Video. Once it imports, you're gonna to want to go to mask and then hit green screen and it'll make everything that's green clear. And then I usually just adjust the size a little bit and then I will click the little yellow check mark on the left side to say that I am done with that so clip. So next you're gonna select the video clip and then move the little slider to the beginning of the clip and then you're gonna do the same thing as before where you click video sticker and then the little option window will come up and instead of clicking camera roll this time, you're gonna click YouTube. So you're gonna wanna search green screen. I searched brush green screen as if I was a beauty YouTuber. And you're gonna wanna make sure the clip that you select starts out white and turns green. That way it's brushing into your video rather than out of it, if that makes sense. Unless you are looking for the opposite effect, in which case you would want to start green and then end up with white. So I'm just going to select this clip and then open it into my project. And then real quick here, you're gonna to want to hit that in button as soon as the screen turns white and then hit out as soon as it's fully green and then open it into your project. And then I usually maximize the screen and just open it up so that it covers my entire project. That way my full screen is being brushed into and then you're gonna to want to go to mask and then hit green screen. That way the green is gone and it just brushes right into your video. So next you're gonna to wanna to click the finish button on the top right. And then it'll ask you if you wanna add music and I usually do that in iMovie. So I just hit no. And then I hit save to camera roll before opening up iMovie and then clicking the plus sign on the left side and then going to video and then selecting the video we just saved and that'll open up right to the beginning of my video and then I'll just usually play through it make sure it all looks good it's a little bit shorter than I would normally use but I'm just gonna go with it for the sake of this video and then next I'm gonna show you guys how I add in little pop-ins for my Instagram or my social medias or whatever so I go to Fonto again and then I click the bottom camera and click plain image and then select either the white or the black and then I'll go down to iPhone 8, the horizontal one like before and then I will change the color to green and then I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna search Instagram PNG just to find one of the Instagram icons with a transparent background that way it can pop up and there'll be nothing behind it if I don't want to. So I just found this cute little purple one that goes with the theme of this video. So I selected that and I saved it to camera roll. Then I'm gonna open up the Magic Eraser app and sometimes they have the check marks behind them saying that they'd be transparent, but as you can see here, they were like fake. So I have to go in there and manually click them out myself and then save it in high resolution and then I'm gonna go back to the app Fonto and then I'm gonna click add item and then I'm gonna drop down and select the filled in square and make sure that's white. Then I'm gonna go to add item again and choose the rounded edges square and make sure that's white as well. 
and then I will just adjust the sizes of both so that the filled in square fits inside of the rounded edges. In order to make that work a little bit easier, you can select the outline of the square and turn the stroke all the way up so that the line is thicker. That way it blends more seamlessly. I don't know why I'm making it so small in this video. It really could be as big as the box. Um, I don't, I have no idea why I made it so small. But once you're done with that, you're gonna go to the three lines on the bottom left and then click add image. And then you're going to open the Instagram icon and then shrink that down so that it fits inside of your square. And then you're gonna click add text. You can just click anywhere on the screen for this and then type in your username. And then you're gonna to want to go to the little square icon on the bottom right and save image. And then you're gonna to want to go to the magic eraser app and then click with the magic wand, everything that is green, it'll turn it to the transparent checkers. And then you're just gonna to wanna to save that in high resolution. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to iMovie and then click the plus sign on the left and then select the image and make sure when you do that, you click the three little dots after you select the image and then click picture in picture. That way it comes on top of as an overlay. And then you're just gonna want to adjust the size and the location. I like to put it at the bottom and then just click off of it and see how the black disappears and it just becomes a transparent little bubble that pops up. Then I'm gonna add sound to it. I like to add the bottle cork sound effect just because it draws your attention to something's happening and it draws your attention to the screen. The bottle cork sound effect does not come with iMovie. I can make another video showing you guys how to get these little sound effects and how to save them into your phone. But for now, I will just show you guys that it now works and pops. So then I will usually adjust the length of the clip because my username is pretty short. So I don't really need like 20 seconds of the pop-up because that's just too long and it distracts from the video in my opinion. So now this is me just showing you guys how I cut things, which is kind of what I did when I cut the beginning of the first clip. But here you can see that I'm like itching my eye or something. So I just wanna cut that out. So I usually scroll to right before my hand comes into frame and then click the scissor icon and then click split. And then I go to right after it's out and I start talking again. As you can see, my mouth is like beginning to move here. So I was about to start another sentence. So then I just click the scissor icon and cut that out. And then once the clip is selected, I just hit delete. And now you can see there's a little bit of a jump cut here, but you don't have to watch me itching my eye. So now to finish up this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how I add my little sound clip to my intro. So you click the plus sign and then you'll click on audio and then I go to my music and then songs and I just choose a song from my library. I have royalty free music saved on my phone so I don't have to go in and find a new song every time because I usually pick from like one of the few songs or YouTube has changed their rules recently and you can use popular music as long as it's like less than five seconds, I think. So sometimes I use popular songs, sometimes I'll just use royalty free to be safe because you never know when YouTube's gonna change up the rules again. So once the audio is imported, I usually cut it a little bit into the clip of me talking so that I can kind of fade it out and it's not an abrupt music and then me talking. So I'll cut it at the beginning of the video and then I will click on the sound icon and then I will click on fade and I will just drag it back into the clip a little bit and I'll do the same fade thing with the beginning just so it doesn't like alarm people with when it starts. And then I'll usually turn down the volume of the sound clip just because I don't want it to be super loud as soon as you click on the video. I like it to like get louder as you go on so that people have time to like adjust the volume or whatever. I probably think way too much into this. So next I'm gonna be adding text to the intro. So I'm just gonna select the clip and then click the little T on the bottom and then choose which style font I want. I like it to come on in the middle 
and then I will just type in my username and then click OK. So next I'm going to show you guys how I do my transition slides. So we're going to go back into Fonto, click the camera icon, and then click plain image once again. I'm going to go with the white screen this time, and then this time I'm just clicking custom and putting 1280 by 720. But again, you can do iPhone 8 or iPhone 8 Plus as long as it's the horizontal version and it's at least 1280 by 720. So then I'm going to go to add image and I just saved a couple cloud and star icons from Google. So just type in cloud PNG and star PNG. So I'm just opening a bunch of them and then sizing them so that they are pretty small and then arranging them around the page. And then once I have them in a cute location, I'm going to save that and then I'm going to move them a little bit. I usually tilt them all different ways as well as moving the location of them all just by a little bit, not too much. And then I will save that again. So once you have that saved, you're going to want to go back into iMovie, but open a new project. And then you're going to want to add in both of those pictures. And you're going to want to disable Ken Burns because if you don't, the picture will like slide around. So you disable that and then I usually pinch it so that it's as small as I want it to be. And that way everything fits into frame. And then I'm going to adjust the sizes of each clip to as small as iMovie will let me make them, which is usually like a second or less than a second, I think. And then I will adjust the transition because as you can see here, the transition between both pictures is that little triangle, which makes it fade from one picture into the other. And I want it to just be the straight line. That way it goes straight from one picture into another because that's kind of the look that I'm going for and that's kind of the look that I see on other YouTubers videos. So that's kind of what I'm trying to recreate here. So once the clips are as long as you want them to be, you're gonna select each clip until it's yellow and then click the scissors on the bottom left and then click duplicate and make sure you're moving them so that they alternate from one picture to another so it kind of does that jump thing. I usually do this until the video is about five or six seconds long because with the transition I feel that six seconds is about the length that works best. So I'm gonna save that clip to my camera roll and I usually save it in as high as it will let me. As you can see my battery is low here. And then once it is saved and exported, I will then open up Vont, which looks a lot like Fonto, but it is not, it is for videos. So then you're gonna go to the camera on the bottom middle and you're gonna open up that video from your camera roll. And then you're just gonna click anywhere on the screen and you're gonna click in add text. So as you guys can see here, I'm actually filming another video. So this goes with that video. So that video is tips about moving. So I'm just typing in organize when you're packing and then I will adjust the size as well as other features on the text like the font. And then once I have the font that I like, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna click the text and then I'm gonna click style. So once you're in style, I like to turn the alpha all the way up and then turn the blur all the way down. That way it creates like kind of like a shadow effect while making the text 3D at the same time. I just really like that look. And then I'll usually curve the text a little bit just because I feel like it looks more like a title slide that way. So next is gonna be my end screens. So for these, I go into Fonto and I'm just gonna open up the same background photo I got off of Google that I used in the intro. And then I'm just gonna add text to it. So at the top, I will put my YouTube name and then I will mess with the style of it just like I did in the title slide. And I will adjust the alpha as well as the blur and I will make an outline and I will just like experiment with colors as well as in this clip, I will go to Google 
and save Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat PNGs in whatever color or style that I just think is cute for the moment. And then I'm going to add those in as well as type in my names. And then I'm going to add it all into the end of iMovie. And then I'm just going to turn off Ken Burns, like I said before, and adjust the length of the clip. And then that's how it turns out. So that's all I really have for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope it helped some of you. And please give this video a thumbs up if it did. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.